One myth in stem cell therapy is that umbilical cord or placenta drive stem cells are by far superior than any other stem cell. That is an absolute myth. The stem cells that we drive from adipose, which is fat or bone marrow, have shown to be significantly more responsive in the orthobiologics and the orthobiologic world, meaning your joints, your shoulder, your knees, and also your spine and the disc. The outcomes are approximately in the 82 to 86 percentile that we've found in the past seven years doing this uh, with the autologous, which comes from your body, uh, versus the umbilical or the placenta, which we do and we used to do a lot more of. Uh, and hence, we've really moved to just doing the autologous themselves. Another myth is that the stem cells that are driven from a patient that is older versus the umbilical or placenta are not as good. That is a myth, that's not true. As long as we humans are alive and we regenerate new cells, our cells originate from an embryonic form of the cell that is produced, for example, in our bone marrow. And as long as we live, we produce them. And as long as we produce them, they must come from somewhere, which is they start from an embryonic baby form and then they graduate and they develop into the cells that they become. Another myth is that all stem cells are equal. That is a myth. And we believe that they are not equal. We used to use a lot of umbilical placenta exosomes. We still use them. Uh, but now we predominantly use the autologous human body stem cells from the own patient for many reasons, uh, one of which is that the cell count amounts are much more accurate and clear uh, because uh, when we get them from the patient, they're alive, we don't freeze them, we don't thaw them, as opposed to what we get from the outside world is that A, we have to thaw them and also uh, we don't know where it's coming from, even though there's a lot of good work that's gone behind understanding where the umbilical or the placenta stem cells are driven from, it still is coming from another human body or body form, which could get rejected by the patient within the joint or the spine, or even the exosomes that we've used in the past, and that they, the accuracy on how the growth pattern is it could be questionable. And there have been cases that the overgrowth of material has happened with the exosomes, which we don't want that either. So hence the human body's autologous stem cells, as far as we work with and we believe is far superior than any other. Another myth is that research in stem cells or therapy in stem cells is all illegal. And uh, it is somewhat true uh, but it's not completely true. Uh, it all depends on how we manipulate or not manipulate for that matter, the stem cells. The FDA doesn't want us to manipulate the cells. And hence, it's illegal to use any placenta or umbilical cord or exosomes that are not driven from the patient's body. And that is true and it's not illegal. The groups and companies that are involved in IRB studies can do research on this. However, what is allowed currently uh, with the FDA is transplantation of a human body part or bone marrow, for example, into the patient themselves without minimal manipulation. The minimal manipulation is getting it from one place to another and then use a centrifuge to extract out a portion of it is good and approves the normal. However, if you multiply them or change the cellular structure in any way or add anything else to it, then it's no longer legal or approved. So the FDA doesn't permit anybody using placenta, umbilical cord, or exosome. So there's a lot of clinics that use those, and those are not within the guidelines of the FDA. Another myth is that 
stem cell therapies are dangerous or could be rejected from the body. It's a myth. Relatively speaking, the stem cell injections that mainly are from the autologous source, which is from the patient's body, have almost no issues. And certainly the possibility of having a reaction versus stem cells that are coming from somebody else's body or made in the lab are significantly less or close to none. So the reaction and reactivity portion of it goes out of the question. As far as being dangerous and being versus being safe to use, if it's, for example, if you use for a knee injection, it is no different than doing a, a steroid injection or a gel injection. So it's got minimal danger uh, in the joints and also in the spine and the facet joints or in the disc. Let it be known that you can never say any medical procedure is risk-free. Anything that we do, including an injection for a vaccine has risks or injecting the joint with steroids or gels has a risk or anything that we do for that matter has a risk. However, stem cells are no different than any one of our routine procedures that we do regularly. The myth of stem cells being painful especially if you have to draw from the bone marrow. It is an absolute myth. Clinics that are well equipped with the right physicians and the right products should be having an anesthesiologist on board that would do a procedure like any other procedure, that the only thing you should feel or remember is just the stick in your vein when they have the IV and then they administer the medication, then the patient falls asleep or light sedation, and you won't have any pain or remember anything that happened, uh, including extraction of the bone marrow or the injections in the spine. Um, as far as the large joint injections go, it's no different than getting a steroid treatment. So you get an injection of numbing medicine, and once you get that numbing medicine injection, that's relatively pain-free. So the amount of pain associated with stem cell therapies are minimal or none. Some pain associated with the procedures or after the procedure, so where we extract the bone marrow from, for example, from the hip, might be a little sore. Or if we do the mini liposuctions to extract the fat or the adipose tissue, will be sore just for a couple days, but nothing significant. It's not significant pain that requires pain medications and so forth. Some of the injections in the spine could be painful and uncomfortable for a couple of days after the procedure, if we're going into the disc, or if we inject the joint uh, with adipose or bone marrow, it might be a little uncomfortable for a day or two, but it's not anything that is severely painful or requires lots of medications or hospitalization, etc. There's a myth or maybe a misunderstanding between the issue of religion and stem cells. My belief and my understanding of it is that most religions or our, most of our traditional religions are against cell therapies that would produce a new human or an animal from a laboratory as opposed to a mild extraction of the patient's human tissue back into the human themselves again. I've had a lot of religious patients, priests, that have come to us and to me, and I've treated them for stem cells. There has no issues whatsoever. So I believe there's a big myth and misunderstanding. There is a another layer of a myth is a religious belief that I completely respect, uh, which talks about getting other humans' blood or umbilical tissue or placenta tissue from an infant or from a fetus or from the umbilical cord of a fetus into another human. I understand that and I respect that. I used to perform a lot more procedures 
that had umbilical cord and placenta. And I used to encounter that a lot. Now that we do more of a autologous stem cell transplantation, uh, that issue is relatively moot. But I have a lot of patients that come up and first thing they say is, I really don't want uh, to any other human's tissue in my body. And I completely respect that. One of the biggest myths that I come across is a recovery period after stem cells versus surgery. The myth is that the re recovery is prolonged and painful after stem cell uh, therapy, just like it is in surgery. That's an absolute myth. I think the majority of the patients that I've seen in the past seven years really want to do stem cell therapies because of the recovery, which is significantly less than any surgical method. And respectively between the same procedures, for example, a spine procedure, surgical spine procedure versus a stem cell spine procedure, the outcomes are significantly different. On the surgical side, most patients are laid up for three months. Most of our patients are back up and running and four days. Most stem cell procedures are the same. In two weeks, they start physical therapy. In six weeks, they are doing almost all their normal activities. And the pain levels uh, post-procedure is approximately 90% less than most of our surgical counterparts and counter-procedures.